The IAuth facade abstraction is in place after the previous part, and by using this interface, we can write sign-in form application logic without having a clue about how the authentication is actually implemented. This means that we can write the block code without even touching Firebase Auth. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, where you are getting prepared for real app development so that you will get freelance clients or a job and be confident about the apps you built. So subscribe and hit the bell to join us on our quest for becoming in-demand Flutter developers. As you can see on the diagram right now, a block receives events from the UI which contain raw data and then the block outputs states which contain validated data. This is signified by the red arrow which means entities and validated value objects and the purplish arrow means raw data. And the block which we are going to create in this part is the sign in form block. And also be sure to check out the written tutorial from the link in the description where you can find all of the code written in this video, links to all of the explanations and overall go through this lesson at your own pace. So if you are not yet familiar with the block library, I would recommend you to familiarize yourself with it first before continuing with this fourth part of this tutorial series and I actually have a bunch of tutorials which you can check out from the card in the corner regarding the block library which we are going to use in this tutorial. So first things first, before implementing anything with the block library we of course need to add a dependency for it to our pubspec.yaml file. So let's open that up and we're just going to use a handy extension here, pubspec assist in VS Code, and we want to add Flutter block. And once it's in here, we are good to go. Let's just save our pubspec.yaml file, and we are currently using the version 3.2.0. Now we're going to create a block in the application layer of our app and because we are creating a block which will be responsible for the sign in form and this block will use this IAuth facade which we have created in the previous part we're going to also create a auth folder so just like the domain layer has a feature called auth also the application layer has the same feature so it's also called auth for authentication. But then, in addition to just auth, which is the top feature, we are also going to have a sub feature for auth, right? Because this auth facade, which we have right here, now currently is responsible only for registering, signing in with email and password, and also signing in with Google. But of course, over time, we are going to add some other functionality to this IAuth facade. For example, currently we don't have any way to check if the current user is already authenticated. So, of course, we are going to need to add that functionality later on to this IAuth facade to really just be able to tell if the user is already signed in, right? Therefore, the functionality which we are going to implement now in the block is really just for the sign-in form, for registering and signing in. So we're also going to create a sub-feature under the auth folder called sign-in form. And now we should just create the block files. But as you know, block is a little bit verbose in this regard because you need to create actually three files in order to get the block going. And because of that, there is a handy extension for VS Code, which you can find on the VS Code Marketplace, and it's called Block. So make sure you have this one by Felix Angelov. Just install it and also a very similar 
uh, plugin is also available for IntelliJ or Android Studio if you are using that IDE. And also all of the links to these extensions are in the written tutorial. So once you have that, we can now right click on the sign in form and we can create block new block. Let's just call it sign in or actually sign in form call. We do not want to use equatable and we have just created these three files and actually we can, uh, yeah, we can just move them to the sign in form feature. We do not need this intermediary block folder, so we can just delete that. And now we have these three files. And if you know something about block, uh, you immediately know what we should be doing next. And if you don't really just check out my tutorials, which are specifically tailored for explaining the block pattern and the block library. So what do we have here? We have sign in form block and then we have sign in form event and sign in form state files. And here it's very important to keep in mind that if you look at the diagram, which is right now on the screen, the states and events are a part of the presentation layer only the block file or the block class is a part of the application layer. So this means it's perfectly fine if the states and the events have some terminology and some classes which are really Flutter related. And that's because we do not really need to separate them from the Flutter framework all that much because states and events are actually a sort of a view model. It's the block which holds the application logic. If we now go over to the sign in form event, the first thing which we need to do is to come up with all of the possible things which the UI can perform to trigger some logic inside the block. So what can we do from within our sign in form? Well, if we go ahead and check out the sort of a live design, which we have right before our eyes, we can see that the user in the UI can either sign in with email and password, then the user can register and also sign in with Google. And additionally, because blocks in the application layer are responsible for validating the data, which is coming from the UI, and remember, as you can see on the graph right now, blocks will be fed raw data, which in this case means raw string email and raw password string also. So therefore it's also important to add events for when the email string changes and when the password string changes. And we are going to implement these events not as separate classes as is usual with block. Instead, we are going to use freeze because we do not really want to have just classes. We really want to utilize the power of unions. So let's now create a sign in form event freeze union. So I'm going to use a code snippet. So I will just write F union and import the freest annotation, which I, for some reason, cannot do, uh, which is interesting. So I will probably just need to copy it from some other, uh, some other union, for example, from auth failure. But the thing is that because we are inside a file, which is a part of another file, we cannot add import statements directly in here. We get an error for that. So what we need to do is to actually add the import to the sign form block file right here. We need to add the import to the block file. And now this import can be used 
from also the part of event file. And this union should be called signing form event. Okay, and the first event which can happen is email changed, which will accept one string, email string, and it's going to be called just email changed. Okay, and uh, after we hide the sidebar, we can now just copy uh, this event below and we are going to create another one password changed and also change the class name password changed and with this done we are now going to create the rest of the events which are for pressing the register button and then the sign in with email and sign in with google buttons so again let's just create an f union case this one will be called sign in form event and register with email and password pressed these are really long names so let's also create a similar name for the class awesome now let's just copy this long name of an event and we're going to change it to sign in with email and password pressed similar thing for the class name and lastly we are going to have sign in with google pressed cool so this will be the last event for the block so sign in with google pressed and let's also rename the class with capital starting a letter and now we can generate the file for this so that we can actually have the freest union but again we are missing something we are missing our trusted part statement which should uh, tell the builder into which file to generate the code for this freest union. But as you can see, again, we cannot specify the part statement directly as this because we are inside a file which is itself a part of another file. Because of that, what we can do actually is to specify the part statement into which the code should be generated inside the block file which is referenced as a part of directly so we're going to create sign in form block dot freeze dot dart file this will be the part and this means that our event code will be generated not into sign in form event dot freeze dot dart but into sign in form block dot freeze dot dart. Cool. And with this said, we can now kick off code generation. So let me just write it here. And after some time, we are going to be good to go. Awesome. Now that we have all of this event code generated for us, let's move on to defining the possible states for the UI. Again, we are going to use a union and not just simple classes. So let me immediately get rid of this and instead create F union sign in form state. Whoops. Cannot write capital F's probably. Okay, sign in form state. And now let's think through which states we're going to have here. And also blocks usually output different states, much like we have different multiple events. But in the case of a sign in form block, which is responsible for validating the UI data, 
it's much better to have just a single state class and not have multiple union cases or maybe multiple classes if you are used to implementing the block states with just pure classes. So actually what I have created here is wrong. I should not have created a sign in form state union, but instead just a simple data class. So yeah, sign in form state will be the class name with underscore. And now we should be good to go. Okay. And again, we did not need to specify the part statement here because it's already specified in the block file itself. Cool. And also we have an error inside the block file because there is no longer an initial state, but we're going to get to that later. We're going to fix it once we define the states. So what kind of states can be present in our app or the other way to ask this question is what do we need to communicate back to the UI from the sign in form, right? So this is the sign in form which we have here. And of course, whenever the string and the email field changes, we need to validate it so that then later on, we can show an error message below the text field if the email or password is invalid. And this validation is of course determined uh, by our nice value objects right here, email address and password. This is where everything is validated. So we know that we somehow need to pass back validated values, which are going to be the email address and password uh, value objects, because as you know, the events actually transport only the raw strings right? So to communicate back the validated value objects, we of course need to add them to the sign in form state. So we are going to add at required email address, email address. Let's import email address. And I have just no clue why we cannot import anything and it's rather unfortunate maybe it's because i'm running on a very experimental flutter version which i should probably not be doing but whatever we are going to just import everything manually i guess later on and similarly we should have a password here so ignore the fact that nothing is imported we're going to fix that up later but basically, we are communicating back to the UI through the state, the validated email address and the validated password. And what should we communicate back next? Well, of course, whenever the user fills this successfully with some uh, valid data, data at example.com and password will be over six characters long, and we then try to sign in, you are going to be able to see a progress indicator, right? Because we need to reach out to the server, uh, tell that server, hey, this is the data which the user entered, can he actually sign in or not. So in order to see this progress, which you could see below the button, we need to communicate if we are currently submitting the data from the form to the server. And this will be possible with a Boolean is submitting. So these are pretty obvious. This is what you would do usually anyway. But then what we need to have here next is the success or error backend response. So as you could see, if we try to sign in with something which is not actually a valid user email and password, we are going to get a snag bar saying that this is an invalid email and password combination. And this is actually communicated with the 
auth failure which we have created in the previous part we are going to get to all of this later on so this is the failure which is actually responsible for showing that snag bar in the ui so this means that we somehow need to communicate back the response from our authentication backend and well if we take a look at the iauth facade we can see that we can easily represent either a failure or success by returning either auth failure unit right so this is also the type which should be present inside our state to indicate either successful sign-in or that something went wrong along the way. So we're going to have at required and either auth failure unit and we're going to call this auth failure or success. But the thing is that this is kind of problematic because initially there will be no response until the user presses a button right and because the right side means successful sign-in and the left side means an unsuccessful sign-in we also need to have a way to tell the ui that just no sign-in happened yet there is nothing to really do because on successful sign-in, of course, we are going to sign in the user and show him his uh, notes, which he has added to the database. If the sign-in is unsuccessful, of course, we're going to show some sort of an error snag bar. But we also have to have the middle way where we do not show neither snag bar, but we also do not uh, progress into the core of our application. So how can we do that? Well, of course, again, we can just assign null to auth failure or success. But again, nulls stink. A much better option is to use an option. That's right, there is a type called option and it's much like a non-nullable type and it works very similarly to either. So basically, let me show you what it does. We have an option here, option either auth failure unit. And of course, we cannot import anything because I'm stupid enough to run the latest Flutter version and nothing worked with it, so, so excuse me for that. But anyway, with an option, you have some and none. or actually uh, none and some. Much like with either you have left and right. So as you can probably tell, none means no value is present and some means that some value is present inside the option. So it's much like if you set something to null, but again, you get the benefit of having to check if something is none or some, you cannot just possibly ignore the null and then get a null pointer exception. So that's what we are going to be doing. If the response from the server is none, this means that no sign-in has happened yet. And also it's a good convention to also add the option uh, trailing keyword, so you, you could say at the end of a field name whenever it's an option. And then again, there is one last field which we need to communicate over to the UI, and that is whether or not to show the input error messages. Because if I go to the emulator and I just restart the app actually, here we go, the app is restarted, and now when I start writing an email here, which is completely invalid and also a password, which is just totally short, you do not see any error messages just yet. The first error message shows up only after the user presses some sort of a button, for example, register or sign in. 
only now you can see the error messages for the first time. And now they are going to be auto validated these fields so that even when you add something valid and then you make it invalid again, the error message will appear immediately. But again, this error message appears only after the user presses some sort of a button for the first time. So after this button is pressed, we need to communicate back to the UI that the UI should start auto validating the text fields. And this can be accomplished with a very simple Boolean again. So let's just create add required bool show error messages. Okay, and now with all of this done, we are just going to go to block and we'll need to import everything manually because yeah, I'm running the latest version of Flutter. All right, so I have just copied everything from the already finished tutorial and it's right here. So now we don't have any errors regarding the imports which are missing and that's cool but we have one error and that is that we are using the sign in form initial state which we have actually removed now we need to create the initial state ourselves right because uh, we have just this sign in form state which needs to be filled in with an email address password and all of these other things so how is the initial state actually gonna look like well first of all we need to create a factory for it so uh, sign in form state dot initial and from it we are going to return this constant factory sign in form state uh, state and we're going to fill it in with some sensible initial values so the email address should be initialized to an empty string so it's actually going to be invalid therefore from the beginning and that's also a part of the reason why we cannot even think about showing the error messages right from the start because an empty uh, email field if you think about it it's really invalid and you definitely don't want to greet your users your first time users for that matter with an invalid email for no obvious reason like that user didn't even start filling in that email field you really do not need to tell him that it's invalid he knows or she knows or whatever the next field which we should have here pre-filled is the password field so again, it's going to be basically invalid right from the start. And then show error messages will be, of course, false. That's what's really important. We are not submitting right from the start. And also the auth failure or success option will be none. Because there is no response yet from the authentication backend. And with this done, we can now go right to the block file and we are going to say that the initial state is sign in form state dot initial, just like this. We are now going to get to implementing the logic for the block in this part, because as you can see, that would make this part very, very long. But what we can do at least one thing inside this block class is to prepare it fully for just uh, writing the logic in the next part. And so in order to do this, we need to have the I auth facade present inside the block so that we can then call methods on it. So we are going to create a final field I auth facade. And again, I cannot import it, unfortunately auth facade will be its name and let's just create a constructor for final fields and now I will somehow import it over here all right cool now that I have added the import statement manually we are all prepared to just start writing the logic for this block 
in the next part. So make sure to subscribe to this channel if you do not want to miss it. And also to go through this tutorial at your own pace once again and to get all of the code also, check out the written tutorial available from the link in the description. And if you are serious about becoming a great Flutter developer who can build real apps for clients or at a job, go to flutter.education, a link is also in the video description, to get the top curated Flutter news and resources in that improving your app development career. Over there you can also subscribe to my mailing list to get the best Flutter resources delivered weekly right into your inbox. And if you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, and also the next part where we are actually going to get to implementing the sign-in form block logic, be sure to subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your Flutter skills because here on Reso Coder, I am determined to provide you with the best tutorials and resources so that you will become an in-demand Flutter developer. If this video helped you with understanding how to model the events for a block and also how to think about what should be going from the block to the UI through the block states, be sure to give this video a like and also share it with our developers who are surely going to find this information beneficial too. Leave a comment if you have anything to say and see you in the next video.